back to the basics, part one. Today we're talking about word problems using all four operations. That's addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Every math class you will ever take for the rest of your life will deal with word problems at some point. The problem is we always look at word problems relative to another skill. Fraction word problems, equation word problems, expression word problems, systems word problems. There's a basic four-step process to almost every word problem out there. We're going to walk through that today. First thing you need to do, read the actual word problem for understanding. This is probably the most important and the most overlooked step. A lot of students just try to jump to the number so they can jump to an answer. So let's look at the word problem. John has $12 and is given eight more dollars. How much money does John have now? Think about it like English class. In order to understand the plot, you retell the story. You analyze the story in order to find the plot, the story, how the characters are related. It's the same thing for a word problem. In order to find the plot, or in this case, the operation that's being told, you need to understand the story. Retell it to yourself in your own words. Forget about the numbers for a moment. John has money, he's given more money. How much money does he have? To me, that sounds like addition. We'll talk about how to select your operation based on your understanding of the word problem in a moment. Next step, identify the given information. This is where a lot of students start out. A lot of people are told to either underline or circle the numbers. The numbers are not enough, but they're very good to pay attention to. So we're going to circle $12 and eight more dollars. Notice I circled or identified the unit along with the given information. Step three, model the word problem. At this point, we understand the plot, we see our characters, now we need to translate. What I mean, we have words, we need math. Let's translate it into a mathematical model. You can draw a picture, write an expression, write an equation, whatever models or translates the word problem into mathematical terms, whatever makes sense for you. So I have $12, I got eight more. To me, that models it very well. Now I'm gonna evaluate. The very last step of the four step process is the step that most students try to jump directly to. This is where you actually do the final calculation. 12 plus eight is 20. During this process, you need to include your unit. In this case, it's dollars. How much money? Well, the unit for money, in this case, is dollars. Let's break these steps down a little further. Step one, read the word problem for understanding. Again, don't just look at it. Don't just read it to get through it. Read it for understanding. So don't just look at the numbers. The plot is in the story. You need to understand the story of the word problem in order to model it later. Be able to summarize the word problem. That's a great way. If you can retell it in your head, you'll be able to choose the right operation. So at this point, we decide on the operation. In order to do that, we need to figure out a couple things. Before we think actual math, we need to figure out the situation. To do that, we can either think combination, separation, or comparison. If it's combining, odds are you can predict that your solution or your answer will be bigger. There are two ways to combine. In one scenario, you may see things put together. I have one pile of things, I have another pile of things, I put them together into one big pile of things. That is a model for addition. Another way to combine is if the, if the piles or groups are equal. I take multiple groups and put them together, making a bigger group. That's multiplication. Again, our basic understanding of these operations that we discussed earlier this week will help us understand when we have to go from word problem to operation to calculation. The next model we could look at is separating. This is when you would predict that your answer will be smaller. There's two ways that we could see separation in a word problem. One where there's takeaway. I have an amount, I take away an amount. This is a model for subtraction. Another way is if the amount that I'm taking or separating 
is equal groups, if I'm breaking it into equal groups or sharing it, this is division. Again, we're looking at the very basic operations and how we described and learned them before. They're the same concepts in the real world. To compare is when you have two different amounts. This is again, subtraction. That's why we call the answer for a subtraction, subtraction problem, the difference. We're looking at the difference between two amounts, whatever's left over in the bigger or smaller pile. Step two, identify the given information. You can either underline, circle, or list the given information. Identify the value and the unit. Now by unit, I mean feet, dollars, cookies, money, monkeys, kittens, puppies, who knows? Whatever the word problem is dealing with. Okay, we're looking at the values and the amounts. Well, next step, model the word problem. You're telling the story, either through pictures or expressions or equations. You are telling the story. So if you're a visual learner, draw a picture. Drawing a picture may not be appropriate for all word problems, but sometimes it's a good way to start. It may eventually lead you to an expression, a mathematical expression or eventually an equation, which we'll look at later in the semester. Evaluate or solve for the answer. Always, after you calculate, include a unit. Think again, back to English class. You answer in complete sentences. How much money did John have? John had five dollars. Five is not enough. I always use the example of if you worked on a construction site. If your boss told you to go cut a two by four, Go cut it to five. Well, is that five inches, five feet, five miles, five centimeters? You have to have a unit when you're dealing with real world situations. Find the unit in either the question or the given information. It will almost always be in the question, but the given information is a good place to look if you're unsure. And last but not least, always circle your answer when you're done evaluating. Let's try this a couple times. So we start by reading for understanding. You want to be able to retell the story and summarize. Jane went to the store nine times last month. She buys seven t-shirts each time she goes to the store. How many t-shirts did Jane buy last month? Well, again, don't even think about the numbers right now. Jane goes to the store a certain number of times each month. Each time she goes, she buys a set of t-shirts. Well, to me, sets of or groups of, that sounds like multiplication. I can predict that my final answer is going to be bigger or greater than my given information. That to me sounds like multiplication again. So I've read, I've understood, I found the plot, I found the operation. Next, I need to identify the given information. So in this case, I'm going to underline it. Nine times per month, seven t-shirts each time. So to me, that's nine sets of seven. I under identified the given information. Now let's model it. Again, I've said it's multiplication based on what I understood of the word problem. I see nine sets of seven when I identified my given information. So I might write an expression, nine times seven. Maybe you're a visual learner and you need to draw out a picture. So I gr draw out my nine sets or nine groups and I have seven in each of those nine groups. So you can go through and in the final step you would either count or multiply. So let's evaluate our final answer. I get 63 shirts, nine times seven is 63, or I could count out 63 dots in my picture that I drew. Always include a unit in the final answer. So I have 63 t-shirts. How do I know the unit is t-shirts? Well, if I look, I have nine times per month or seven t-shirts. One of those is probably my unit. Look at the question. How many t-shirts did Jane buy last, night, last month? She bought 63 t-shirts. The unit always can be found in the question. So I evaluated, I circled my final answer, and I'm done. Next problem. Read the problem for understanding. The school is planning a field trip to the zoo. 12 full classrooms are going, which is 305 students altogether. If there are 61 seats on each bus, how many total buses do they need to take the trip? All right, retell the story. 
I have some classrooms. There's a total number of students given to me. I have to take those total number of students and separate them amongst six or amongst groups of 61. Each group of 61 is a bus. Well, if I'm taking a big group and I'm separating amongst smaller groups, to me that sounds like division. I can predict my, my final answer is going to be smaller, which means it's separation. Since they're equal groups, that sounds like division. Again, I understood it, I discussed it, I found the plot, so now I understand my operation. It's going to be division. Let's identify the given information. I'm gonna list it out. I see 12 classrooms, I see 305 students, I see 61 seats per bus. Now, look at the given information. I have, I've already determined that it sounds like division. I'm taking a group of students and breaking them into 61 seats, or groups of 61 seats. When I read the word problem, when I understood the word problem, it didn't sound like the 12 classrooms even took part in it. So that might be a distractor. Even though it's a given piece of information, it may not be part of our calculation in this case. So I identified my given information. Now I'm gonna model. Now, I don't wanna draw 305 little circles or dots or students or whatever. So I may just write out an expression. I said it's division, so I took my big group, I broke it into my groups of 61, and then I'm going to evaluate. 305 divided by 61 gives me five buses. Again, I get my unit from the question. How many total buses do they need? Five buses. I circled my final answer because again, you want to you want to clue in the reader or grader to where your actual answer is. Because you're showing so much work, you need to show them where the actual final answer is. On your own, try the last problem. Remember, follow each step. You've seen the modeled work. Show it just the same way. Thanks for stopping by and I'll see you in class.